Well, I grew up in the country in Tennessee. My dad got like a satellite dish, one of the early satellite dishes. It had this remote control that had like 120 channels on it where I saw Porky's for the first time, Smokey and the Bandit, and Kentucky Fried Movie, a lot of like televangelists. And then when I was done, my dad wasn't into sports. I'd say, hey, Pop, you want to throw the ball with me? He would just say, go do it yourself. So then the only thing I could do is I'd take a baseball and I would go to the satellite dish and then I would throw the baseball into the satellite dish and it would go like that and it'd come out the top and I would catch it. And so I would spend hours just going like this. I, would, I was like a, a moron. I would just sit there, catch the ball, throw it in the satellite dish and then I'd go back and watch the show. I feel like th those two things definitely uh, in informed what I do now. Then we moved into Nashville proper and very close to Vanderbilt. And so there was a, there's still there, a movie theater called the Surratt Cinema. I was probably skateboarding at that, by that point, but like in between when I get tired, I would go, it was like $2 and you would see like a W.C. Fields movie, a Douglas Sirk movie next to like a Fassbender film. That's where I first saw like the Marx Brothers movies. Harpo Marx is like the greatest image in cinema, but also like watching like Burt Reynolds in the movie Gator is like the most, charismatic person in the world, you know? I never understood the whole high and low thing. It was more just that make you laugh or make you feel a certain way. Mostly what I tried to avoid are like the things that are in the middle. I had a pretty like antagonistic relationship early on with most, at least in my mind, with most directors and films. And a lot of what I was trying to do is the opposite of what I was seeing. And I was trying to get to a place that was more internal. There were just images and sounds and things that were specific to what I wanted to see in a, in a way that I had never seen them before. I always think that the movies and all those things that you love, they live inside you but I was trying to do something completely different. I was trying to invent my own f film language. I was really never interested in being a writer for anyone else. I just wanted to make my own films always. I was really on fire at that, at that point in my life. The ideas were really just like coming at me. I loved that show Cops. I had loved that show Cops for a long time. And I, because I really, what I liked is I liked when they, the cops would kick the door down. And then all of a sudden you would see, you, it was the first time ever where you were al allowed to see people's houses look like, the inside of people's houses. You know, and like you could see like this, like, like a Metallica poster next to like a Boys to Men poster and some dude with a mullet. It was like really, uh, I was like, you know, it felt really honest to me. I never uh, have like spent much time thinking about like, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say what I'm seeing. Spaghetti. With, with casting, it's mostly like a, a magnetism or just a, a, like, a, like a vibe. It's like everything else. It's like, it's just like a look. Uh, let's see. Solomon and Tumblr, uh, one of them was cast from a Sally Jesse Raphael episode and the other I had seen in the movie The Road to Wellville. Both of them had the same magnetism of Buster Keaton. I was like, wow, if you put that together, it's something special. <laughs> you got this one? Yep. Don't kill it, bitch. It's a house cat. It's a lesbian cat. You can tell. Looks like my mom. 
Jacob, I saw him at a Circle K. He was sitting by a dumpster. Uh, and I just looked at him and I was like, man, that's Bunny Boy, <laughs> mostly. He was just perfect. Linda Manns, one of my all-time favorite actresses. She's another one. She's just pure. She's like, uh, ma she was like magical, obviously from the Malick movies, but also from uh, Out of the Blue. She was great. She was difficult to find where she, you know, because I, I wanted to work with her. She hadn't been in a movie in a long time. They were living in like a, somewhere I think in California, like in an or orchard, like, I don't know if they were picking fruit or something. But I think the husband, I remembered her telling me, was the one that when Michael Jackson was filming that Pepsi ad, um, when his hair caught on fire, her husband was the one that extinguished his hair, had thrown the rag on MJ's head. Looks like the mass sequence where they shoot the grandmother. Check out his socks, pretty cool. Sequences, bikes, BB guns. Chloe did the wardrobe, she did a great job. These, these brother, um, Kate, that's Casey and Jason. I grew up with them. Oh, these are the little kids that shoot Bunny Boy. That was wild casting. I just drove through the town and they were playing a, a it was pouring rain. They were like playing a, a, a broken, uh, I guess it was like a mixed Pac-Man. It was in the rain, it was broken. And they had a, a like a, covering over their head, like their head, like a piece of plastic. And I walked up and watched it. And they were like, motherfucker, kill it, kill it, get it, get it. But then I looked and there was no game. You know what I mean? Like they weren't even playing, but they were so animated. I was trying to like, you know, understand. This shitty ass rabbit stinks. I know. It smells like pussy. You want it? It smells like the household. And motherfucker, it smells like wet back dick. That's the albino. Albino was obsessed with uh, Patrick Swayze. She had a Patrick Swayze fetish in real life. She was just, you know, her whole life was about Patrick Swayze and working at Dairy Dip. She had a, what's it called? She a uh, pistol on her side. My favorite movie stars are Pamela Anderson and Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze is sexy. He's good looking. Uh, John Hughes' Escofia is probably my greatest, in my life, like my greatest collaborator probably. And I loved him so much because he also took a chance on me. And uh, I loved his movies so much and what he taught me probably at that age, making that film has like guided me in a lot of ways to, through everything. I think of him all the time. Uh, I think of things that he said to me and how bold he was and, uh, and his touch was so like, not just with my movies, but with the films he did with Laos and in general and just who he was as a person, like he was, uh, yeah, it's a, a huge part of the movie is also him. Like a, it, he was a he was like my my comrade. If I'm thinking back of what we were trying to do, I was trying to make a movie that basically felt felt like it was assembled out of the air. That it was sequences and scenes that were mostly just dr dropping out of the out of the air, and that like there were, there didn't have to be anything that preceded it. And there didn't have to be anything that followed it, that each thing was self-contained, closer to like a, in some ways, like a collage. We were deconstructing narrative. We were taking sound from other places, using different media, still photographs, VHS, DV cameras, 35 millimeters. It was very much about a vibe, but at the center of it, at its core, it does tell a story of a town that's been ravaged by this tornado. It goes off on these kind of like moments and a, a lot of it's like, you know, I used to love like Milton Berle and like the way he would do his stand up and it would just be this one joke about his mom next to this other joke about his kid next to the, but then at the end of it, it told like this kind of amazing story of his life and I, I was using 
more kind of like classic stand-up convention, deconstructed narrative and images kind of coming from all directions to kind of create this th world that I wanted mostly for you to feel always trying to get to a point that's beyond a simple articulation. I never really care, you know, there's obviously meaning, but the meaning is really the residue of the image. It's all made by a human with a thumb print, and it's a building a house, and some of the movies and some of the art and some of the writings are the floor and the bathroom and the chimney, and then at the end of it, you've created this thing that you can live in. But what it says, I'll never tell you.